Come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits? The Saturday Night Freak Show. (laughs) Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Coming your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination which you can help us out with by going to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button or leave us a review we like reviews we'll read those reviews on the air but all of that stuff helps us become the fastest growing podcast in the galaxy these are the internet radio superstars michaela holly and i'm colin sean is on assignment mm. and tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by holly Mm. What did we watch tonight? Tonight we watched The Mortuary Collection. Sounds spooky. Spooky. From the year? 2019. Or 2020. And direct. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, yeah, Colin, we, Colin and I were talking about it before we started recording. He was like, I could have swore I only saw this like a year and a half ago. Yeah. yeah. Or um, last year. Yeah. Yeah. I can't remember, yeah. It, yeah it, it premiered at a film festival in 2019. Okay. Um, but it's released... It was released in 2020. Okay, on so. the Shutter streaming platform, yes. which if you're a diehard horror aficionado, you should probably be subscribing to that mm-hmm, channel. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Directed an, by? Oh, directed by Ryan Spindell. Produced, written, and directed by Produced, well, Ryan good, Spindell. Yeah, good for him. That's right. Good okay, so though. who is this fellow, and should we be taking note of him? So this fella, um, I had never heard of. And then I looked him up and realized I still would never have heard of him. Oh. <laughs> um, but if you've seen this, then you will know him from uh, the Babysitter Murders, which is the short at the within very the short. At, at, within this movie. Holy cow! That was actually like its own standalone yes, thing. Yeah. That is his short that the babysitter is watching at the end of this. Oh wow! Yes. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's, that's probably cool. a film festival that's cool, thing, right? I, I was like, that. that's pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. I dig it. <laughs> And based on that, I assume he was able to get funding for this movie. That was from 2015. But yeah, he kind of got on the radar after that. Okay. Well, I guess my first uh, question about this movie is it has, so in its presentation, Mm -hmm. it has like a very slick, I mean, it's obviously like a low budget movie. Low budget. Mm -hmm. I mean, in comparative terms, well, do you know what the budget was? No, I don't. There's very little information about this. Out so there. maybe it's not so low budget. I mean, it comes off like it's got yeah. money. I mean, a lot of it. There's a lot of digital stuff going yes, on here, quite a um, bit. Uh, mostly in atmosphere, ambiance, and production design. Mm-hmm. Um, it's got that sheen on it. Yeah, yeah, it looks professionally done all the way yeah, through. It kind of really has does. a yeah. So like, how did he go? Do you know like how he went from the short to all of a sudden you know i really don't i tried to look up information and um granted i didn't have a lot of time to look up stuff but i didn't really find much oh my god this it it has a wikipedia and it's like three sentences yeah exactly like there's really not much information yeah i I was like i was like okay there's gotta be info here i'm like oh nothing it's like yeah yeah, it's like three sentences on this whole thing yeah so like i'm I'm sure there's an article about out there about this guy Mm -hmm. something about like you know keep watch on this guy or something like that but i didn't come across it um, so if, listeners, if you know some tidbits about him, please let us know. Um, cause yeah, yeah I don't know much about him. I'd just be curious. Is he a writer mm-hmm. first? He like wrote these stories yeah. and then figured out like okay, even his, his, the them rest of his IMDB, it's just like a couple shorts. And then he did a movie called we come in pieces. Um, and he did a couple, <laughs> I like of, that title. <laughs> and, um, he did a couple episodes of 50 States of Fright, the Sam Raimi show. Has he done anything af- since making this movie? Um, is yeah, he still there alive? Was, I guess that's a yeah, question. I think life. so. Mm. There was <laughs> there was one other thing after this. I don't remember what it was, um, but it's something else I hadn't heard of. I think so it, was, it led to yeah. other employment or whatever. You know, I was like, because when you usually when you see movies with this type of uh, gloss to mm-hmm. them, um, usually it feels to me like they're, you know, uh, international co-productions. It turns mm-hmm. out that it's actually from New Zealand. And they put, uh, you know, American accented actors in it, or it's a Canadian movie. Mm-hmm. But this one's from Astoria, yeah. Oregon. Yeah, they filmed in Astoria, <laughs> Oregon, same place as the Goonies. It's yeah, yeah. And um, I assume that a lot of its funding came from the 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 get that they had with yeah. the casting. I would think so. Who is our big star in this movie? Our big star is our main mortician. Played by Clancy Brown. 
There you go. Bam. Clancy yeah. Brown. And it's how I heard about this movie. <laughs> yeah. How'd you hear about this movie? Uh, I follow Clancy Brown on Instagram. Nice. He's fantastic. And on October 1st, he he posted a video that was just like a compilation of all the spooky roles he's ever played. Oh, yeah. Nice. And it's fantastic. And I saw that clip of, of him as the mortician. I was like, what the fuck is that? Right. Mm. So I had to look it up and I was like, oh, this looks fantastic. Well, Shudder, I remember, had done like a promotional push for this. It seemed like when they premiered it, because I guess that's what Shudder's trying to do, right? Like, yeah. Their whole ethos with being a streaming service is trying to be like the anti Netflix, where Netflix goes all in on a series, bingeable mm-hmm. television. Everybody does that, mm-hmm. right? Shudder's like, we're going to buy movies. Yeah. Right? We're going to be the movie channel. We're going to have movies all over the place. So when they do get one that I think they uh think is good Mm -hmm. i mean they get a lot but there's certain ones that they feature and so then you do see like a marketing push as far as this one's special let's hype this motherfucker up yeah yeah and i did see some stuff and that's kind of what you know how it came on my radar Mm -hmm. um but clancy brown is also a producer on this movie Mm -hmm. i love that yeah Mm -hmm. and i don't know how much he worked on i don't know if they gave him producer cred to build the movie up or if he really did have a lot of say in this movie, I'm actually not sure. So again, there's nothing about this out there from what I found. Well, I mean, it seems like it, it seems like, you know, I mean, I'm just putting pieces together here. There's like four producers and then there's several executive producers, Mm -hmm. but I'm guessing that somehow contingent on his participating in the, in the movie, he got some say on it and was able to secure some type of yeah, financing. I would think so. I mean, there's really, there's no one, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong here. I mean, we watched it and I haven't gone through the cast, but um, there's no one else in this that's, you know, I mean, he's the star. Yeah. yeah no, I mean, we, well, Jacob we, L. Lordy now from Euphoria yeah, is like very we, famous now, but. We were talking off mic. Um, his, he came onto the screen or he came onto the scene with Euphoria. Yeah. He, he blew up pretty big. And that came out like the same year this yeah. movie came out. So. And then just recently, um, I don't know if she's going to get anything of it, but the lead from Ring of po- Rings of Power. Yeah. Is in this. Yep. The, Crap. Who is she in this? Sandra. Sandra. Which one was Sandra. Yeah, well, we, we, we can't okay, say okay, without okay. being s- spoilery. She was, in, I... she was in the second story a lot. Oh, okay. Yes. Holy crap, that was her? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. All right, then. Uh, <laughs> okay, so um, it's an anthology movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that means you're going to have a wraparound story. Yes. Um, and who better right. to wrap it around than Clancy Brown? Right. There, there you go. <laughs> uh, and then I think there's five, there's four, there's five. Five, four. We'll four. Get, yeah, we'll get into it. Four. Yep. I, yeah, we'll get into it. I don't it. remember at the yep. moment. Okay. Maybe five. Okay. So <laughs> I guess. Um, so the movie's bookend is a very stylish um, rendition of a, a, a town called Raven's End. Mm-hmm. It's very atmospheric, mm-hmm. uh, heavy, heavily digitally processed, as we said before. It's a good Halloween movie. It's got a lot of nice spooky Halloween it atmosphere. Is. Yeah. There's a newspaper. I was sad that I discovered it after. Yeah. <laughs> after my Halloween pick. <laughs> well, there, there's, there's something going on in this town, it seems like, because this is uh, um, a ghoulish town. It, mm-hmm. it sounds like by its history and by like the newspaper headlines, as we see a, a paper boy driving right. around, like throwing these. And it's like, what the. What was it? There's a gruesome there's creature a, in a lake, and then there's yeah, a, a riot at the local asylum. And, and there's uh, one missing of children and mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff. And uh, something tooth fairy. This what was it? The something. Yeah, the something tooth fairy strikes again, or something mm-hmm. like that. And we're introduced to the mortician. Uh, the mm-hmm. paper boy eventually takes his way up to the mountain. There's yeah, a we big start with gothic, the paper boy. Yeah, which was, I mean, was that a nod to Goonies? Maybe because like, because it's like uh, it's taking place in Astoria. Yeah, and this little kid looked well, like he walked off the Goonies. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, and so I guess okay. So what? So I mean, he's a kind of a grim character. Oh yeah, yeah. He's very ghoulish. I mean, he's the mortician, and he looks like. And the makeup they have on him, they did a really good job of getting that, like, the way your skin gets discolored when you age, yeah. and, like, and splotchy and kind of weird. And, Purpley. Yeah, like, liver spots mm-hmm. and shit everywhere. And, like, but, like, also, like, the sallowness around his eyes and, like, the sunken in. It, it, it's a really good makeup it's job on him. Good. Yeah, It took 
is that it took them two and a half hours every day to do that. I believe it, man. Yeah. With dentures and everything, I noticed. Mm-hmm. The and dentures had- really bothered me because the teeth are made extra small to be like offsetting, offsetting. But yeah. like, so there's the, lots of them. There's so many of them. Yeah. Every time he opened his mouth, I was like, oh my god, there's so many tiny so teeth many in his mouth. <laughs> like, ooh. <laughs> well, what do we get from his character? What's he like? Um, he's. I mean, he's very, he's very low energy. <laughs> he's very ghoulish, but he also isn't like unfriendly, yeah. if that makes sense. Like, you know, the, he scares away the paper boy because the paper boy goes to knock on the door because he sees all the papers piling up mm-hmm. and he like peeks in the mail slot. And then, you know, there's a fl- he uses his camera as flash photography and he sees eyes looking back at him, opens the door and. He scares the kid just as natural presence. Um, but then like the kid goes to run away and he's like, Hey, you forgot your camera. Like he's not he's not mean, you know. But like pick up your newspapers, man. <laughs> like, true. you know, like there's, a, there's an easy fix to this problem here. Kids won't come knocking on your door if you do, don't that's leave your true. papers piled up, make it look like somebody's dead inside. Well, we might, we get, might find out why later. Though. I guess that's a question. Do you get the uh you know, for the folks who haven't seen it, is the impression that he is like a kind of a misanthropic guy locked away in a the Boo Radley, old, yeah. 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 Or because I guess, you know, it didn't seem to me that he was trying to keep people away. It no, was he lives in the funeral home. Like people come for the Which funerals. is like at the top of this stylized, creepy, windy mountain. Like it is yes. very cartoonish. Well, it is Raven's Yeah, yeah. I yeah. Mean, yeah. Everything yeah. in this was like uh what was it? There was something later on in the movie that um was it it wasn't the newspaper, but there was some printed thing and it was like I mean, everything is like super stylized it was like you know designed by uh charles adams or something Mm -hmm. you know like everything in the in the movie Mm -hmm. all the font work and everything for any kind of uh uh paper that's uh that's seen um he seems like uh uh, misunderstood maybe because he looks uh this ghoulish character right you know he's an old guy at fully dressed to the nines uh tuxedo and all that stuff and a stickler for uh time punctuation and the rules, right? Yes. Um, you can't escape fate. He talks about yeah. fate a lot. And he is a, a he conducts a funeral for apparently a small child who's mm-hmm. died, and uh, he is greeted by a um, person who shows up in the mortuary after the funeral, after the place is closed. Mm-hmm. And who is this? This is Sam. And who is she? Is she played by anybody we know? Um. I didn't recognize her. Nope. She looks like somebody who's like on the boys, but I know who I'm thinking of. It's not her. That's not her. (laughs) Um, No, I looked up her IMDb right before we started recording. I was like, oh, nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I I guess this is a question. Like, so what do you think of the, like the, uh, the acting presence in this movie from like the, the performers? I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I thought it was good too. Yeah. And I, there was a couple of roles where I was like, I wish this would have been someone more famous, yeah. but I understand why it's not, but that's right. not against anybody in this movie. It's just like, for it. it's just like, yeah. oh, that would have been fun to see someone famous play. That was my, more my thought, but mm-hmm. like, I think everyone in it is pretty great. I think so too. Yeah. I mean, I do too. I think it had a, um, there's like a, there's a professionalism to it. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you know, we're saying it, it, it's in the photography, it's in the digital work, it's mm-hmm. in the production design. Mm-hmm. And I think mm-hmm. it's, it extends to the cast. It's like, this seems like a movie movie, right? Right. Yeah. Not like, you know, Hey, we got some money together. We're able to put this, you know, thing yeah. together. It this is like, it doesn't feel like a bunch of people that are like bummed that all they could get was a horror movie. Like it yeah. feels like a bunch of actors that are like doing their job. Right. You know? And it doesn't feel like it's a first timers movie. No, no not at all. it doesn't. Um, Earlier, Michaela, you were saying about the makeup on mm-hmm. Clancy Brown, and I wonder if that's the second star of this movie is mm-hmm. uh, Amalgamated Amalgamated Dynamics is the company that did all the visual effects. Or, or, I don't know if they did the visual effects. They did all the makeup work. Mm-hmm. Makeup's good. And they're um, so Tom Berman and Alec Gillis, mm-hmm. right? The guys, they've been around for like 30 years or maybe more doing uh, effects work on movies. Mm-hmm. Um and I saw Tom Berman was a, a sheriff or a police officer nice. in the movie, but it didn't <laughs> like in the credits. It doesn't say that you know when it gives the al- amalgamated dynamics uh, mm-hmm. credit list, they're not there. So mm-hmm. they're foreman of the shop or they own it or whatever. Gotcha. But, um, 
So there's going to be a lot of effects work, a mm-hmm. lot of monsters. Uh-huh. That's mm-hmm. basically what the, the movie is going to try and deliver. Yeah. You know what? Too many gross liquids. Yeah, there's a lot of gross Big issue this with movie. this movie. Every single story has multiple gross liquids. It's true. It made me a little nauseous at certain yeah, points. Yeah, there's a lot lie. of bodily fluids. So. Well, it's mm-hmm. a horror movie. And they're all so Trying viscous. Gross you out. <laughs> so is that it? It's going for more. Is it scary? It, it can it's be. It's got yeah. scary moments. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think it's going for horror, whether yeah. that's scary or gross or yeah. just yeah. gory. Like, I, I think it's going for all, everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, so the the mortician meets Sam. Mm-hmm. Sam is applying for a job. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a help wanted sign out front, and she's like, I'm, I'm here for the job. Which aren't, I, aren't, I've, <laughs> I've never seen that outside of a mortuary, a help wanted sign, but now I'm going to look for it. Like, yeah, they're usually because, like family businesses or, you know, Well, and like, they're... that's a skill and it's, a trade. Yeah. It's not just like, it's not like working retail, you know? It's not just like you come in and hand them your resume and hope you hear a call back. Like, But I just loved the line. It just made me think, like, I'm so glad Clancy Brown did this part when she's like, you know, I saw the help wanted sign up for, aren't you hiring? And he's like, always. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they do something to his voice. No, no. It's him. Okay, he's just—he's a talented it, voice actor. He's just that great. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's right. Because yeah. he's Spon- on SpongeBob. He, he's on SpongeBob. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> you know, this movie made <laughs> me and, and Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> this movie made me disappointed that we did not get him in the Pet Cemetery remake instead of John Lithgow. Oh, me too. Because he would have crushed it. He would have actually made an effort. And that would have been a nice nod to him being in Pet Cemetery too. I know it's like I get that we couldn't because he was in the second one, but you could still do it. You could still do it. It's not the same universe. Yeah, who cares? Yeah, yeah. And he would actually would have tried, unlike John Lithgow, who did not try in that movie. See, is it because we've been talking about Pet Cemetery? Like we bring up that remake, it seems like quite a bit. (laughs) And now I'm seeing like you know they're not like appreciation posts, but like stuff about like history. It's a missed opportunity, Pet Cemetery, and the remake. And I'm like, why the hell am I seeing this now? Anyway, it's a yeah. No, I I saw something recently too. You're, yeah, that you're is not weird. wrong about that. Yeah. Okay, mm-hmm. coming st- back around. Always come back. I, <laughs> I still love John Lithgow. Uh-huh. No, I do I too. I do too. But I think our love for him gave us a lot of false hope for what he was going to do in that movie, and he yeah. turned in a he turned in a zero in that. I still think it was direction. Well, mm-hmm. and he was competing against the memory of Fred Gwynn. Right. Like, nailed is, it. You right. know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. Well, you, anyway, you go back yeah, and listen to our yeah, Pet yeah, Cemetery. Yeah, we did all Both of them. <laughs> We're not here. All, we do we do all we've, three Pet Cemeteries? I think we've done all three yeah. Pet Cemeteries. We have yes. those episodes. Yes, we did. <laughs> um, okay. So what's our, so basically the setup is she comes in and he's going to, he, you know, every life tells a story is mm-hmm. what he says. And mm-hmm. so he's going to tell, she demands basically. Yeah. Which the, the tagline of this movie is every corpse tells a story. Every corpse yeah. tells a story. Which, yeah. So are you, guys, are you guys feeling like we watched a movie very similar to this very recently? <laughs> no? It felt kind of, well, I mean, yeah, it was like, uh, if you had Vincent Price in this, it'd be... And Susan uh, Tyrell. Yeah. It's, wow, it's really similar, yep, this There's setup a library for this that shows up later. Yep. Um, so we're gonna, but this one... I was one, in a mood, okay? No, I was, yeah. like, I was like, it's a formula I like, so I'm, no complaints here, but... Well, the, so she He's going to demand stories. Mm-hmm. He's going to tell them. So what's the first uh, first tale that we're told? Right. So to kick us off, uh, he tells a little tale about. Uh, and one thing I love about this movie is the um, is the retro feel. Every story is like in like the 60s. And yeah. The 70. Like it's just it's just a cool retro feel. Um, and this like adds to your budget. This is the yeah. thing that I yes. kinda, it seems ambitious, yeah. right? Because it's we like, get like pretty, like pretty detailed production. Like there's yeah. cars and there's there's a lot and there. The costume design alone and like yeah. all the stuff. Yeah, you wouldn't normally have to invest in. Yeah, the number of like rotary and wall mounted phones alone that yeah. appear in this. Yeah, all yeah. the all the house interiors are. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean it, it's an it's not. 30s art deco but maybe it is some of it is some of there's, of there's it. blended decades in this mm-hmm. very it, much it reminded me a lot of like like uh maybe like a guillermo del toro movie yes mm-hmm. i can in see that it's mm-hmm. lighting it's color palettes yeah and, you know all that stuff it's like dingy but bright at the same time yeah. if that makes gold accent that makes on sense. everything yeah. yeah yeah but all the interiors are going to be like gothic or victorian right. sorry but like, like very, the malignant house yeah, yeah everything's like, like the malignant there's house. very deep greens and very you know deep dark colors but then you've got 
a redhead in a yellow dress with yeah. red lipstick. Like there's mm-hmm. very contrasting yeah. colors there. And each story I also noticed, and this also is like expanding your budget, each story is basically told on a different layer or level of the mortuary house. Yeah. Because he's basically giving her the like, okay, I'm going to give you the tour. Yeah. Of the place we're going to go from, like, the main chapel to the embalming room. Uh, there might have been one more. And then the sub-basement, you know, the heart yeah. of the home. And there's a story at every level. Um, so the first one, right, uh, apparently. Yeah. Well, we don't know when no. this. It yeah, feels first... like the movie's maybe contemporary. But um, the first story seems like it's from, like, the 60s or yeah. something, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they never they never say what time period it is, but everything looks pretty retro. And the music, uh, yeah, I think maybe the music's have, amazing. We gotta call this out. Um, so, who did the the score and and the songs? The Mondo Boys. Do you know anything about them? They're awesome. <laughs> they, indie rock. They it's indie rock, but it sounds like. Um, it, I mean, because I has thought like a Motown vibe to it almost. Yeah, I thought we were hearing like you know source music from like 1960 or something Same. like that. Yeah. You know? And then in the end credits, it turns out they did all the songs and they did the score and the score is this big like orchestral and it was mm-hmm. like a pretty good score. Yeah. You know, and it's I was like, good. who the hell are the Mondo boys? So this, you might want to look them this up. Entire- they've scored other stuff, apparently. Uh, they said they've scored projects helmed by icons, Ridley Scott, and then it says Phoenix Forgotten. I don't know what the fuck that is. Is that coming out? Or is uh, that- I don't know. And then it says Steven Soderbergh, the, gil- the girlfriend experience season two. I don't know what that is either. I've heard so the these, are these directors experience. making secret stuff I don't know about? Yeah. I've heard of the girlfriend experience. I've They're heard doing that. like TV, TV stuff, um, you know, like Raised by Wolves. I don't know anybody. It's like Ridley yeah. Scott deal. You direct it, I think. Like- but everything about this movie definitely appeals to the um, hipster horror in me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. All of the like the retro feel, I love the music, all the retro stuff, the, the sets, have the costumes, and, like you know, like old fashioned everything. Yeah, this the thing I love so much about this first short story is I feel like it doesn't really work if you strip away all the retro stuff because like it's the way the character moves and the way things are shot and edited, it's very like painterly almost. Like every you could freeze frame I think any shot of this first story and it would be like. A yeah. piece of art, you know? Yeah, yeah for sure. It, yeah, everything sure. has that kind of like, it's not glamour photography. It's, mm-hmm. um, I don't know how to describe it. We need mm-hmm. to come up with a term for this mm. so we can just keep using it every time we talk about it. We like, do. Oh, yeah, it's we'll that. work on it. Yeah. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll workshop it. Mm-hmm. The first story is like barely even a story. It's very short, but I like. That's why it. I love it's, how it's, simple it is. Yeah, it's simple. It's I think it's effective. It reminds me of. Do you guys remember like the late nineties, early two thousands during Fear Fest on AMC? They would have these. I forget what they were called, but in between commercials, they would have really short horror stories, like yeah. that were like mm. thirty seconds yeah, long, yeah, yeah, like yeah, a commercial. Yeah. And I can't remember what they were called, but it was all shit like this. And that's what this reminded yeah. me of, and I really liked. It's it made very, me nostalgic. It's like it's very much like college writing assignments. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, Give me two sentences about this picture. Well, wasn't that me, like yeah. um like a Netflix thing? Wasn't there a thing called like two sentence horror stories or something like that? It was that? a Twitter thing that they ended up making they, a show. Yeah, on. Yeah. yeah, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very much. That's like what this that. feels like. Yeah. The first story you're saying. Yeah, yeah the, the first, first one. story. The first just story. the just the first one. They get longer after the. They first get more one, complex. But. Yeah. All right, so we're probably gonna we're gonna spoil all of these. Just so you're forewarned at this point, you might want to wander off and watch the movie if yeah. you're interested. We're gonna spoil mm-hmm. them and critique them. So, what's the first story about? So the first story we have a woman. All we see is a woman walk into a bathroom and shut the door. Um, and then there's a man calling to her. It sounds the outside. like they're at like a party or they're something. At, like, you hear they're music like a party. It's like a 60s yeah. party. She's wearing, you know, a pretty like yellow 60s dress. Um, and, you know, he's he's hollering for the door. He's like, I, th- I thought we had a real connection. Am I crazy? And she's just kind of rolling her eyes. And mm-hmm. she's like, I'll meet you out in the veranda in 10 minutes. And he's like, OK, because I thought we were having a good time. And she just like ignores him and mm-hmm. goes into the powder room, sits down takes out the trash can and then pulls a couple wallets from her dress where she proceeds to Mm -hmm. empty the wallets and throw them away. She takes the cash, has a pocket watch, and then she begins to... So she's morally corrupt. Yeah. It was so easy to commit crimes back in the day. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Shit. Oh, yes. Like, like she literally can just throw their wallets with their IDs and everything in a tra- public trash can, yeah, just, and she'll, she'll walk away and be totally fine. That's fine. insane. Not, like, 
like and all the, their description would be what like a redhead in a yellow dress took my wallet right. like well okay you and, know and not to project anything but i'm pretty sure at this point in time she earned what was ever in those wallets yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> the way she was probably treated at that party she well, probably earned that cash like, well, and I was trying to read between the lines here because the way he was like, I thought we had a real connection. I was like, well, is this like an escort situation? Right, yeah. You know, that's what I kind of was thinking. Yeah. You know, like a last night in Soho sort of setup. Sure. But yeah, it's or not, it's it's not even, clear. But. It even gave me like some Holly Golightly vibes mm-hmm. when she like goes out the bathroom window and yeah. you can hear the guy yelling through the bathroom door. Mm-hmm. It's very mm. Breakfast at Tiffany's. Mm-hmm. There's a thump behind the medicine cabinet, and she, mm-hmm. of course, has her nail file on hand because she's going to find out what's in there because that's mm-hmm. what she does. We've established she's a grifter, and so mm-hmm. she, <coughs> pardon me, so she opens that thing, mm-hmm. and then it turns out what's behind it. Well, she opens okay. it, and she okay. sees something in there. Okay, but no, but there's a part first where she op- she gets it popped open but doesn't, mm-hmm. but doesn't look inside, and it slams shut, Yeah, and she thinks... I should still try to open yeah, it after this. Yeah, there's something it. worth something in there, damn it. Because valuables know how to shut doors. Yes, yeah. I was just like, <laughs> it's it's that classic jump scare that's in every horror movie now, especially paranormal ones, of like a door shutting on its own. That's what this medicine cabinet mm-hmm. does. And she says, well, now I really got to get in there. She yeah. has opposition defiant disorder, doesn't she? She's like, oh, well, you don't want me in there? Well, now I definitely got to open this door now. <laughs> yeah, but it turns out she probably shouldn't have because no. she sees something in there that turns her blood cold and she's like trying to hold the thing closed mm-hmm. and shouting, shouting for, for help, help. And, and then uh she sneaks away from the you know, there's no there's no sound so she's gonna sneak away we're like oh maybe she's gonna make it to the door this whole thing takes place just in a bathroom yeah never uh, see another room i love it yeah and then the door busts open or the little cabinet door busts yeah. open and, and squiddy tentacle things. Yeah. Apparently the Kraken lives in there. Yeah. 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 Cthulhu yeah. himself. Yeah. Uh, Lord you guys don't have wall Krakens. You guys yeah. don't have just like. Well, I mean, I do. I yeah. Tell, yeah. You know how like we so you hear like movement in the walls and people are like, oh, it's rats running in the walls or whatever. No, this is really what it is. It's just a big, yeah. big Kraken in your walls. But yeah. it's, the, it's the first example of. <laughs> everything that happens in this movie is shown before it happens in some way. And or. In this particular story, if you notice, like, the decor on the wall, the wallpaper was all, like, sea stories. That's like, cool. Like, ships, and it was all, like, pirate stories. Hmm. Well, there was, like, that. some kind of gunk on the um, the, the light that switch when she comes really in. That was gross. And she's like, hmm, there's this goo yeah, on Yeah, the, the first fuck. instance of a gross liquid in this movie. This yeah. is the... <laughs> had i known this was just the tip of the iceberg of gross liquids in well, this. i did kind of like that because i was sitting there going like okay this is i mean like this isn't really even a story right i mean you know it's like okay she's a con woman she goes in she goes she's committed a sin basically and then mm-hmm. keeps on sticking her nose in where it doesn't belong and then squiddy monster reaches out grabs her and then busts her through and breaks her in half pulling her through the thing but the thing that sold it for me was the last shot which was the little squiddy tentacle thing reaching shutting up the, the light wall, off. shutting the light off. Yep. And I'm like, oh, that's where the that's goo where the came from. from. And I'm like, yeah. okay. Mm-hmm. I liked that. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then this movie is set up in a way where, uh, you know, you basically, because the mortician is telling the story to Sam, mm-hmm. she critiques them kind of, so it's got that kind of postmodern vibe where she is expressing what the audience is sitting there. You know, I guess it's like it's trying to deflect criticism mm-hmm. when your characters are actually speaking it out loud about the story. They're like, well, it was kind of predictable, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever. Like, she'll come off with that. So he's like, then got to tell a better story mm-hmm. next time, right? Mm-hmm. Does it work? I mean, I think it works. Yeah, I it works for me. <laughs> yeah, because like they know that each story is going to get progressively either weirder or scarier or gross, what, whatever mm-hmm. may be. There's also like a wit to it. Yeah. Uh, I think they know what it is. They know what they're making, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. Cause there's, um, there are several, I don't know. It's got an odd tone that I don't know. It's not comedy, but there's there is a lot comedy. of like, is it just like off kilter humor? Just it's black comedic comedy. moments. Yeah. 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 There's some black comedy. I don't think as a whole it's totally a black comedy, but there's some. So what's the second story? <laughs> this this second story is the reason I can't believe I've never heard of this shit before. I know. This like, second one blew my mind. 
<laughs> I, I was uh, not expecting this. Like, well, not only the weirdness of the story, but who is involved in it actor wise. I can't believe I haven't at least seen yeah. like screenshots from this going around or memes or something. It just, so just based on guy? he's in Euphoria. Okay. He he's looked like, like a big Superman deal in Euphoria. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like six five. He's, yeah. he's a big dude. Um, Jacob L. Lordy. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's going to be in every. He's, we were talking off mic. He's getting an Elvis biopic now. So, um, but yeah, he's he's. I mean, I would say he's a bad guy in Euphoria, but Euphoria is one of those shows where everyone's a piece of shit. So it's yeah. like he's a guy on the show. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but um, he is in a frat mm-hmm. in college which you, of course because there's no much if you if you imagine in your head what a frat guy looks like this mm-hmm. is the guy you're picturing mm-hmm. the the squarest of square jaws the like yuppiest preppy mm-hmm. six foot five white man you can think of and did anyone catch the uh, name of the house Mm-mm. no what was it sigma theta delta STD. Uh, <laughs> nice. Oh, no, I didn't catch that. Yeah, okay, that's, right. that's clever. I was wondering a lot, like there's a lot of stuff that's uh, done as, um, you know, production design that they they focus in on mm-hmm. that I was like, you know, not entirely. I'm like, that's probably there for a reason, but I'm not smart enough to get what that yep. is. I didn't see that one at all. But yep. um, so he's um, like, so basically the idea is uh, his fraternity is going to host a party. Mm-hmm. He's given like this, we are introduced to him giving the spiel to the girls on campus that, you know. Uh, Patriarchy is dying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This yeah. is a, a, a spiel to encourage, like, they're handing out condoms. Well, this yeah. is that will empower you. And this then, is, you know, come to this, this party the, later. This is the future. <laughs> yeah. 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 Woman empowerment, safe mm-hmm. sex. Yeah. You can sleep with yeah. whoever you want. This is this your is choice. Yeah. <laughs> and he's got like a bunch of like dorky, not as attractive like mm-hmm. people in his sorority that he's like, I'm going to help you guys all get laid. And like, yeah. it's, you've seen this setup and you've seen this dynamic in a million movies, but that's why this story why works. works. Because you're like, I know the formula here. Yeah. Like, this guy's really There's, just. They use certain tropes because they don't have to explain anything. Yeah. They know we understand. Yeah. It. Like, you yeah. just, you yeah. know, this guy is the kind of guy that will just say whatever to get whatever he wants. Yeah. It, everyone else be damned. And yeah. you know that that's going to backfire on him eventually. <laughs> and it backfires on him when he meets this uh, rather this unassuming girl who comes this to this is Sandra. Sandra. Mm-hmm. And you're telling me that she, is she Galadriel? No, and, uh, she's. No, um, she's the dude's sister. Yeah. Um, What's her name? I, I can't get a handle. In Rings of Power? Ir- yeah. It starts with an I. Yeah. Let me pull I don't up. remember anyone's name okay. on that show. Yeah, yeah I can't keep track of the names it. on that show. Uh, <laughs> I watched the other one. House of the Dragon. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I watched that one too. Okay. <laughs> um, so... Uh, so he meets this girl and invites her, mm-hmm. and she kind of seems like she's the mousy, like new she uh, looks freshman. So much like what's her name in May? She yeah. really does. Angela she Bettis looks, from she's May. So much like she's her. got like a hook though, because she's kind of coming across as maybe a little like naive, a little mousy, but at the same time, she's got she does a really good job of having that like like she's got a secret. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know where she's like appealing to him in a way that he's like, okay, this girl's different, and I don't know why, but I want to find out how. But she's also kind of socially awkward. Yeah, it, it, like the scene where they're having their meet cute. Yeah, um, is very she's all that. It it feels it feels like Freddie Prince Jr.'s character talking to Rachel Lee Cook is very much like the mousy weird girl, but like just take your glasses off and she'll be hot, right. you know. But sort it, of. It, thing. But it works because she's like. I'm not interested in you, but I'm also kind of interested in why you're here talking to yeah. me right now. Mm-hmm. It, it works. And she disarms him, too. I think that yeah. whole, like, is like, oh, I just come here to get laid. She's like, so do I. And he's like, uh, yeah. I was just joking. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> She's very disarming, and it's, it's very effective. So then he's intrigued and wants to meet her, and she comes to the party later. Mm-hmm. And, like, uh, right away, they're off to the bedroom uh, and, oh, they lock eyes across the room, and they're yeah. just like honing in on each other. Mm-hmm. Everyone around is like watching it happen. Yeah. And they mm-hmm. just can't take eyes off the each hunger. other. Yeah. They're feeling the hunger, and so they go up to the bedroom, and the whole thing is like, okay, they have you an gotta... all night dalliance. Up well, there. but but specifically, <laughs> okay. the condom is like, okay, oh, yeah. you, you know, you were handing these out. And there was a big to do yeah. about. So you got to put the condom yeah. on. He's like, I hate that condom. Okay, yeah. well, we're skipping over a big important thing here. For she says, like, how do you know you're safe with me? How do you, you don't know anything about me? Aren't you worried? There's a lot of missing boys on campus. Oh, yeah. Because there's, there's there's flyers uh, everywhere. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah all these. She's saying guys. all this to him, and he's yep. he's horny. He doesn't care. So yeah. 
She flat out was like, they're like in the middle of making out. And she's like, haven't you seen all those flyers from yeah. missing boys? Yep. I could be a serial killer. Mm-hmm. And just like, yeah, red okay, red whatever. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, Literally telling him what, what's about to happen. Yep. <laughs> so is she a serial killer? Kind of. <laughs> well, this, this so. The, I was really hoping this was going to take a trick or treat turn. She'd be a werewolf or something. I was rooting for yeah, it. I was like, come like, on. There's going to be a monster or some kind happens. of makeup effect in this at some point. Uh, they're, they're all night dalliance is mm-hmm. kind of hilarious. It's pretty funny. Yeah. It's the way just, that this is shot and yeah. edited it is fantastic. It's just like, like the f- the focus is on the alarm clock, which is just changing time like every hour. But in the background, there's like a blurred picture of the two of them in every sex position possible. Yeah, and yes. some that are impossible. Some yeah. that are impossible. Like, like, yeah. So it's kind of funny. Yeah, um, it's pretty funny. <laughs> it's also it's from 2020 or 2019, so that means there's no nudity in the movie. Yeah, <laughs> everybody has sex with their clothes. That's, fully yeah, on. that's true. She um, did have her bra on she did have and her bra a skirt. On. I yep. mean, it was like okay. Um, so then. Um, he wakes up the next day. Yep. And, and he's like, oh, yeah, that yeah. happened. <laughs> that's like his attitude when he yeah. wakes up. Yeah, because it Big turns out campus. that's but magic left, number 67. But according. she left her number and lipstick on his mirror and he just like smudges that he just doesn't care. Yeah. yeah. Well, see, that's going to that's going to come back to this mm-hmm. is a moral lessons for you <laughs> young fellas out there. Mm-hmm. So. um he begins to determine Earth. Well, he's yeah. looking in the mirror and his frat brother comes in mm-hmm. and is like, well, how'd it go? And he's like, how I expected it to go. And his brother's talking to him. He's like, hey, what's what's going on there? You, you Did you catch something? What's happening? And he's like, oh, no, it's just, you know, friction, whatever. <laughs> and then he leaves and the camera pans down to his lower abdomen that's all splotchy and almost like blistered. Yeah, is. This is where the vomiting rough. comes in. Then he soon starts after. With, yep. Starts yep. puking all over the place. And Michaela we, doesn't like that. When people we see, well, we see this actor in particular <laughs> puke like in three different scenes. It's like, yeah, okay, it's I get lot. it. And then like this is the start of gross liquids. So much grossness. <sighs> so much gross liquids. Like when, yeah. in the next segment we'll get to. There's yeah. even more. Yeah. Well, it goes to the doctor. Yeah. Which and the this doctor's is, funny. This yeah. is a funny scene. And yeah. I was like, is that doctor the same doctor in like the other three stories right yeah the the actors are reused in the retelling of all these stories. yeah i okay. love that yeah i do too I, was, I love using the same players i was wondering if the frat brother was a police officer later because i'm Probably. like that could be him and then like the 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 married guy in one of the stories i think it was he's, a cop, he's later. A cop later. Yep. yeah um and I think the doctor is like the same doctor in mm-hmm. all of them, but mm-hmm. the doctor, it's a funny story because it's like, well, you know, it's like, uh, you got that, you're going to have to amputate. And like, yeah, well, like what? You know, it's like, no, no, no. It's he's like, okay. just kidding. They don't let me touch a scalpel. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then he funny. looks at the uh, lab work. Because he's probably a campus doctor, probably, which is really yeah. funny. Like, he's yeah. like, yeah, I'm not a real doctor. I'm a campus doctor. They don't <laughs> let me touch a scalpel. That is funny. I've been to a campus doctor before. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> But it turns out his lab work has something strange on it, and uh, the doctor is alarmed. And I got, I, I got to go check something in the other room, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because something's wrong here. And the kid looks at his lab work, and there's something unexpected on there. He's pregnant. Bam! Mm-hmm. Didn't see <laughs> and, that coming. No, so, I did not. I really did not. <laughs> so the reason he's getting sick is because he's, he's got morning sickness. Yep. And this is exactly the moment I'm like. How have I never heard of this movie? (laughs) This guy who is like one of the most famous people in the world right now, one of the hottest rising stars from Euphoria is in a movie where he, that came out the same year where he gets pregnant (laughs) and I've never heard of this. Like, and then where this goes with this character, I also can't believe I've never heard of how, how this ends. Like, well, he tries to call her, and because uh, of course he smudged the phone number, so yeah. he's got to call every single number. But he finally gets a hold every of combination, her. yeah, and uh, goes over to her house. Well, before that, oh right, the <laughs> induction because he oh, hit magic God. sixty-seven. So the frat why guys, why is it not yeah, sixty-nine? So this, I was thinking, <laughs> why, the same is thing? why is it sixty-seven? Why is it not sixty-nine? Yeah, but, yeah, I don't know. That it, maybe, maybe that's the year it's supposed to take place. Yeah, they, oh, maybe. well, they give maybe, like I a. A there's rational like a his, there's for like it. a history yeah the 67 the original founding yeah. members of the frat house or whatever but once the 67 yeah. cherry trees across the country yeah. or some bullshit but at yep. this but, but at still this make point, it 69 it's funnier I, <laughs> makes more sense yeah but at this point he it's been like it's just the next morning still right mm-hmm. and at this point he's like come to full term he's got like yeah. a big pregnant belly yeah but it's he's like, like trying to hide it from his brothers it's like when um what's her name and uh prometheus gets that yeah. alien baby inside of her yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, because there's a lot yeah. of gurgling and mm-hmm. things are going on. And uh, but he, so his they, brothers are about to honor him for hitting number sixty-seven. So it's a big gathering, and they're all in robes, yeah. and they've got this ritual they're going to do. You pin your name on the pendant hall or whatever. Yeah. And so they lift him up in on a throne and put yeah. a crown on. And him. he looks like he's on death's door. Yeah. Really and like, <laughs> I guess they all just assume he's really hungover, right? Like, I would yeah, think probably. so. Yeah. But he's like, he can't even sit up straight. Yeah. Like, and he keeps saying like nope, nope, and then they like struggle to lift him, and and he's and then like in the last ha- last half of his story, he's like hunched over and holding like a robe over his like stomach because he's yeah. trying not to show he's fucking nine months pregnant. Yeah, so it's this like I felt for this actor almost like some of the shit he had to go through. And this all is disgusting and horrifying. <laughs> and the makeup like gets yeah. progressively more interesting. The veins, he's got like green oh my God, veins, the veins on his were neck. Disgusting. Yeah, and yeah. Sunk, those sunken eyes were pretty. Yeah. Uh, you know, like the eye sockets and all. But that what were... really got me was as his brothers lifted oh. him. I guess the only way to explain it is his water breaks. Yes, whenever. But you... it's like it's... spooge. It's like a, <laughs> it... yeah. It looked like jizz. Yeah, it, it was disgusting. And they're like, all of a sudden covered in all But there the- was like a second wave too. Like the initial water broke and then there was like a second wave when they thought it was done. And that's what put me over the edge of that. I was like, I was like, first of all, respect that you, like, I thought I was out of it. And then you pulled me back in. But... Oh, that was, and that so I thought gross. I was really hoping we were done with gross, viscous liquids after nope. that, and we nope. have, it has only just started. <laughs> and, then, and then the next scene, you mentioned the boys. The next scene really did feel like something that you'd see in the boys. Oh, it did, it really did. This <laughs> story especially feels like it would yeah. happen on the boys, but uh, he gives birth. He gets to Sandra's house, and I loved Sandra's parents and their reaction. Jennifer Irwin was really funny. That was that good was, casting. With that her. was funny. They were just so like, Sandra, get down here. They're just like so yeah. done with their Another daughter's bullshit. Boy has yeah. come to the house. They have like a fucking like succubus daughter who's like ruining yeah. all of the boys, all the college boys in town, and they're just like so over her shit. They're just like, God damn it, Sandra. <laughs> well, poor, poor Matt. Does indeed uh, uh, give birth in a, well, it wasn't like, like overly graphic, but it's graphic, right? It's graphic. It's pretty graphic. I, I was not expecting that quick shot of the expanding penis. I yeah. didn't expect to see a dick explode on no. screen. No, 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 no. The, that was But the line that, the line that, that sells it, right? Yeah. Is like, how's it going to come out? She's like, well, probably the way it went in. And you're like, <laughs> oh, oh my oh, God. God. <laughs> then dick expands and then Bam. all the blood all over everywhere and yep. little monster baby is born i don't think we actually see monster baby you see the little no. hand of it don't you no, of one of them I, of, yeah, one yeah of them. we see we just see the girl's mom which at this point we also see sandra making a call for her next victim she's oh, like yeah. oh yeah i guess my afternoon oh, yeah. did free up yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's an evil she's evil cold, succubus mm, she's yeah. cold-blooded <laughs> <laughs> yeah we see her mom carry the newborn up to it looked like an attic mm-hmm. uh, a nursery lay it in its crib and it's making like growling noises and she steps on a squeaky toy and the baby starts crying growling but then we hear multiple cries and growls and you see like 20 there's like a 20 there's like 20 monster baby cribs and they're stacked like dog crates that's what got me is like there were several layers of them and and i was like see this like one like long taloned hand come up and grip one of the the bars the bars beautiful (laughs) and we're out and i was like all right respect yeah Yeah. um unexpected and delightful so then we're on to the (laughs) third story which is about a guy who's married Mm, this one was depressing yeah i was this one is probably my least favorite just because it's it's depressing and i'm like this could be my future like this is this one this is too real like any sort of like yeah, uh, long term hospice care shit is depressing it's as very fuck. Sad. Yeah, I agree. And this one's stressful as shit. Too. Oh, it's so stressful. Made my anxiety get worked well, up. Well, that's for what this they're guy. trying Ooh. to do yeah. with this one. I think he's got a beautiful wife who is in some type of uh, catatonic. Who state. is the same actress that played Sandra in yeah. the previous one? Mm-hmm. And um, he's I guess like you know the fluid thing. It, he he makes every night these like great. Uh, you know, uh, food dishes, and then throws them all in a blender, and then <laughs> you know, and then, and then it's then always like a green liquid that he's feeding yeah. to feeding to her, and it just drips out of her mouth, and it's just, oh, it's gross. It's just, it just, he's just such a poor, unfortunate soul. His <laughs> life is awful yeah. and miserable, and because it opens like with with their wedding day, 
where it's like they're saying their vows and they get to the till death do you part and and then he has like a vision of her like becoming sick and you know obviously become it's a nightmare Mm -hmm. but he's like remembering that and it's like foreshadowing what he's dealing with which is yeah really sad Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it's broken up with some levity i think like uh, there was a line in there that i'm gonna use when i become an old person uh because he's got this neighbor I love yeah. the neighbor. Uh, this <laughs> old lady is the neighbor, and she's like, "What you up to, old timer?" You know, like, she's gonna... so nosy and just like won't let him go up the stairs to his building. Yeah, the she's guy's so like, funny, "What in his mid thirties or yeah. something?" She's calling him old timer. You want to take the elevator? Like, oh no, I'm gonna gonna take the stairs. <laughs> oh, I like, get it. You got to keep working out. <laughs> he's like, "How old do you think I am?" <laughs> she's like, "I'm going to Cozumel. They got naked or nude beaches <laughs> there." Like, what the? F-? She's funny. She basically is like, once my husband died, I started to live life. Yeah, yeah. We never went anywhere when we, when we were together. But yeah. once he's dead, I'm living life and seeing the world. Uh, and, of course, this is, you know, like this guy yeah. is like, mm-hmm. uh, then the doctor, right? <laughs> Same doctor comes over and is like, uh, oh, she actually, her vitals are doing really well. She could last another year, maybe yeah. longer than that. <laughs> and you do get the feeling that this guy loves his wife. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just hates the situation that they're in, you know, oh, because yeah. he keeps on trying to reach her, I think, like, you know, but that yeah. scene when like they have the nice dinner at the table together and then he's like, please give me any sign that you're in there. Yeah. That's a it's really sad. sad. Yeah. Because the doctor has given him sympathizing with his situation mm-hmm. is like, I can, uh, I can give you this, this medication if, if she takes too much of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's like, listen to what I'm saying. <laughs> he's like, it, you know, there's no trace. It'd yeah. be a shame if she took like more than two in 24 hours because that would probably kill her. Yeah. I think that scene was done to give you more sympathy for the guy because when, when the doctor first tells him that, it doesn't even register right, yeah. that right. he's telling you, like, you can kill her with this. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the doctor has to go, do you, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You, know, mm-hmm. you can kill her with yeah, this. Right. And so he uh, tries it. You know, after, you know, you can't reach her, obviously. Mm-hmm. But that's when, like, it is kind of sweet that they do have a nice dinner together at the, like, fancy, like, dining room table. And yeah. she's dressed nice and he's dressed nice. So he's, like, really kind of giving her a last meal situation. Mm-hmm. And he gives her a nice little uh, ornament because apparently she must have collected these. Yeah, uh, it's like a little March chalky. hairs or yeah. something mm-hmm. like that or a little wooden mm-hmm. March mm-hmm. hair. But she, he feeds her the poison. I'm like, oh, it's, uh, it's over and done now. But no, all of a sudden she grabs his hand and we're like, oh my God, you're still alive. You're still there. Well, but he told her that it would just be like she would go to sleep and fade away. Yeah. But she, when she eats the pill, she starts like convulsing and like foaming at the mouth and it looks like it's painful and horrible, mm-hmm. which is not at all what he said was going to happen. No, and he starts to panic. Yeah. And he's trying to get the pills out of her yeah because i got the impression that like a sign of life to him was like you're still in there so he's trying to give it a heimlich mm-hmm. get the yeah. you know and then she collapses falls on the <laughs> the ornament yeah. and mm-hmm. it embeds in her forehead mm-hmm. I'm like oh crap so then he calls the doctor he's like what am i supposed to do and the doctor gives him the worst advice i have ever heard in my I life throw the body in the ocean <laughs> you gotta get that body oh yeah like what the what's i mean are you is it a crime scene I mean, the doctor's probably thinking, I'm going down for this, too, because I gave you, I basically told you to do this, so I'm going down for this. That's why he's like, uh, throw in the ocean, like, so there's no evidence, yeah. Yeah, which would be harder to explain, you assume, so then But everybody would look at the husband, though. Yeah. Everyone's gonna, the husband's gonna go down for this if the wife just goes missing, you know? And he puts her in a chest that she doesn't fit. Her bridal chest. Her hope chest. Which is like, the way to tie yourself directly <laughs> to the crime scene my dude like this is where it starts stressing me out because i'm like he's so bad at this yeah like he has no foresight whatsoever yeah. and it just <laughs> keeps getting worse yeah. guess, has, uh, she doesn't fit so he uses Chekhov's electric knife <laughs> yeah it saws her legs off so she can actually fit in the thing and then uh but she wakes but up she comes too yeah yeah while he's sawing her leg she starts screaming and that's when that guy a little jump scare out of me i yeah. was like holy shit I know, that guy yeah too. then he actually does try to kill her by shoving that thing into her brain a little mm-hmm. more or no he's trying to pull it out he pulls it he out. Pulls it out yeah, yeah. and she dies mm-hmm. she bleeds out yeah mm-hmm. and uh the whole uh this whole episode kind of features are uh around a ring that the mortician finds on her uh, ring, uh, her finger that says "till death do us part." Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the whole thing. It's like can be a, a blessing or a curse kind mm-hmm. of deal. 
Um, so he takes the cart into the elevator, mm -hmm. but the elevator is like a hundred years old, you know, cause, uh, uh, Who's the one guy said, we don't want to wait 20 minutes for it to come back up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's only 11 floors. So for it to take that long, it was a, a slow ass elevator. So he gets stuck in the elevator. And like, <sighs> so not only is this the like classic fear of being stuck in an elevator and then you could potentially die trying to get out. Cause that's how people get decapitated or lose limbs. His dead dismembered wife is also in the elevator with him, so he can't call anybody for help. Right. And, and you're like, well, there's still like a possibility. And my heart rate's get, just. I know. <laughs> the, get, my anxiety was yeah. out of yeah. control. Well, it gets worse, I think. Like, yes. At the point where all of yeah. a sudden he's like, you know, because he's got blood on his clothes. And you're like, okay. And then I think he rings the neighbor, or the neighbor, nosy neighbor, comes up and is like, I'm going to go call the police. And he's like, no, no, don't call the police. She's like, I got to call it. So away mm -hmm. she goes. And he notices that he left a bloody handprint yeah. on the mm -hmm. wall. And then looks down. And it's <laughs> it's lit, it's the shining. It's it's <laughs> filling with blood and he grabs his coat and starts like sopping, sopping it, up. it up. But he's really just pushing it around and kind of making it look even more like a crime scene yeah. because it's like now you just have like these swoosh patterns that look like you tr clearly tried to like clean it yes. up. And it's this is when I'm like, it's over, man. You just got to like lay <laughs> down and accept out. your fate. Throw on the towel, man. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just like come clean. There's just. Well, I mean, you could you Nothing could escape you do. still through the roof hatch or something. I like that this is the point because even during the movie, yeah, you're saying like, "All right, man, it's over." Yeah, give up. Man. You it's just over. give it. You just sit there and the, wait until the they second come. he tried to use his coat to wipe that up. I was yeah. like, "It's over, man. Just lay down, and accept your fate." Like, it's like the office and Kevin trying to clean up the chili. Yeah, it's, it's, that's it's, what he was doing. It's yes. Lost, man. Mm -hmm. It's done. But then the movie goes into a phantasmagorical kind of situation sure where uh, the all of a sudden the elevator drops. Uh, uh, it seems to go many floors below. It keeps dropping like it's like to hell. Dropping to hell, yeah. Mm -hmm. And through the porthole, he sees flashes mm -hmm. of their life together. Life together. And then in the elevator, because of the speed it's descending in slow motion, we see everything start to float up. Mm -hmm. and all the blood drops. The blood and drops, which I, I liked that. Mm -hmm. That was cool. And then eventually, the the chest uh, opens. lid opens. And she floats out. But what's going on there? So she has like a a corpse face. But kind of like an alien corpse Kind of like an alien corpse face. Because her yeah. eyes are yeah. huge and black. and or like yeah. an evil dead too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Her uh, jaw's really yeah. long and pointy. Yeah. It's it's kind of beetle juicy. Yeah. yeah. She puts the ring back on his finger, mm -hmm. right? They, and they take it off. And they kiss. And they kiss. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what the fuck is going on here? I mean, it's all scored well. Mm -hmm. It's slow motion. And you're mm -hmm. like, what? I like the strobe effect yeah. to kind of yeah. cover. Like, I, I know sometimes using strobe lights is kind of like a cheap way to cover things that you don't, you know, the mm -hmm. seams of things that maybe you don't have the money to otherwise cover. But it's really effective in this scene. I thought it really added so to the atmosphere. Yeah. And I guess the wrap up to that is we cut away from that to the police opening the door and it turns out none of that actually happened. The guy's just sitting there muttering to himself over and over again. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. just clutching his wedding album mm -hmm. and he's lost his mind. Which is even yeah. sadder. Yeah. It's like, wow, he just Tell keep getting sad. Tell that to his part <laughs> or yes. whatever he's saying. And it's like, okay. But then he's really, really crazy. important button on the end of this is he was committed to, what was it, Kirk, Kirk Kirkland? What was the play? The yeah. It's Insane like, Asylum called Kirk, oh. Kirk something. Yeah, because Sam is like, oh, Kirkland. And she yeah. perks up. Yeah. And we're like, why'd she, why'd she remember that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, family in there or something? Yep. Or what? what's the thing? Yep. But they said he was committed to that. Mm -hmm. Yep. So she, if, correct me if I'm wrong, this is the last story, right? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so they eventually they the, the wraparound has been following the body of this little child all the way down to the basement mm -hmm. where the uh, incinerator is crematorium and uh sam's like okay i uh, i don't want to actually see this body go in the crematorium it turns out i'm not here for the job i'm actually here for the kid in the box mm -hmm. and so she's like i'm gonna tell you my story mm -hmm. and so then she tells the story to clancy brown and this is where we see the babysitter murders the babysitter murders mm -hmm. now was, are you saying all of this opening stuff is the the uh, short film that he made. Yeah, anytime they cut back to the babysitter murders on TV, because they cut back to the show many times, or the movie many mm -hmm. times, that's the short film that he did. Okay. That's so yeah. funny, because when we were watching, I was like, this looks like a movie we'd, wa we'd watch yeah. at the freak show, and I was like, I guess we could. We, could. we, we should watch it sometime, <laughs> just for fun. 
Well, it plays kind of like an unironic. That's why I'm guessing the mm-hmm. short must go somewhere. Otherwise, it's just you know, it's a, a it's a bad version of like a Halloween Jason mm-hmm. kind of oh, yeah. intentionally trying to look. Well, wasn't the original yeah. title of Halloween the Babysitter Murders? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we see, you know, whatever. So the, this, but it turns out that this is on television. Uh, we pan back mm-hmm. from this slasher film and there's an actual babysitter and yeah. it's Sam. And then Sam's whole thing with her story is that, you know, sometimes the bad guy wins. So that's why she wants to tell her story. Oh, she's critiquing all yeah. the other stories like she was critiquing uh, yeah, EC Comics or something. Yeah. It's all about somebody who does something bad and then, you know, supernatural. Clance, yeah, sets Clancy it Brown right. is always like, no evil deed goes unpunished. There's the balance to the universe and all this stuff. And she's like, I, I, have a, I want to tell my story to prove to you that the bad guy sometimes wins. Yeah. The small detail, but it's important when they're watching the babysitter murders. There's about to be a sex scene. Like this woman's about mm-hmm. to undress, and then we cut to a breaking news update. <laughs> Just love this editing. Thought it was great. Uh, that there's a riot at the asylum. There was a power surge, and the security system went down. And they don't know if it, how many, if any, prisoners have escaped. And I was like, oh my god, uh, like. It, could you imagine living through this? No. <laughs> I am like terrified. Yeah, I would be like, I would be looking for a bunker or something like, right, you yeah. know, but, um, and they cut to like an on the spot interview with two cops. Mm-hmm. One of the cops is Wendell from the previous story. Right. And they're saying, yeah, we don't know if any prisoners have escaped or whatnot. And I'm like, I love this little like in joke yeah. they're doing here. Yeah. Um, and then when the breaking news update ends, we cut back and the sex scene is literally just finished. And I love that. <laughs> I love it. It's pretty funny. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like I said, we're going with like the tone of this, right? It's yeah. like, it's got like a fun sense of humor to yeah. it. They um, keep it light so it doesn't get you too down. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, that whole babysitter mur- murders thing was like a funny, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. uh, clip so in the actual story sam is babysitting this kid who's upstairs we hear the parents calling and saying you know like you can check whatever's in the you know refrigerator and have that blah 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 but after they hear the news yeah we we see we see the we see the babysitter she's just normal night watching scary shit by herself she she's cooking a meal she goes to check she gets a message from the parents she's like goes to check on the kid and then after she checks on the kid, then she starts to cook herself dinner, which I was like, that's fucking weird. I was like, it's weird to be babysitting and full on preparing a meal to the point where you're like chopping vegetables and shit yeah, like, at someone else's house. Yeah, that's it's weird. like a gourmet thing. Yeah, like pounding the, yeah. the yeah. meat. And- like I would babysit kids when I was a teenager. And I think the most I ever cooked was like mac and cheese. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I feel yeah. like most of the time when I babysat, the family would like order a pizza for us. Yeah, and so then we would we, order pizza. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, I would. But yeah. And yeah, if I was going to cook something, it'd be something easy. I would not be tenderizing meat. No. Or like or chopping vegetables. It. <laughs> yeah, 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 or any of that shit. This may be a clue. Yeah, it could be. Um, I was glad it paid off because I was like, mm, "This is very specific," and they're showing a lot yeah. of it. So, yeah. Well, they end up. Uh, then there's a guy in the house. All of a sudden, he's broken in because yeah, she gets know. she gets another message from the parents that are like, "We know who we know who escaped. It was that killer that was mutilating children. Mm-hmm. You know, go check on him. Make sure everything's okay." So she goes, she runs out of the room and that's when we see a guy sitting in the ca- on the couch in the living room. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's kind of, so we're like, okay, in the, in the movie, cause there, there's always, you're seeing like the babysitter murders on TV and there's a lot of parallels in the action, mm-hmm. I guess, right. From what's happening on screen, there's a psycho killer in a mask running around through a house. We see a guy who's just like a normal looking dude, mm-hmm. but he's got a head injury or yeah. something. And the dialogue is, um, it's, I guess, you know, it's one of those things you can read either way, you know, cause, yeah. uh, you know, he's like, she's like, do you know where you are? And he's like, this isn't my house. And like, then they get into like these WWE, uh, mm-hmm. wrestling, ma- you know, the action scenes. I right? did not like the way these scenes were shot at all. It did it's- read as very WWE to me. And like, there's like super strength going on and there's just like crazy like angles and people throwing each other in the air. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't understand that 
stylistic choice for this segment because it's the only segment that has this kind of stuff. I was going to say, I wouldn't have minded it, but it's the only one that is like yeah, this. So and it seems kind of out of place. And everything else feels purposeful but, about this movie. So. But then again, it's because it's from her perspective. Yeah, that's true. She's the one telling mm. the story this time. That's so true. She's an unreliable she's like narrator. Yeah. heroic action star jumping, leaping through the air to pummel the... Yeah, because even and watching... he's like a super strong badass yeah. and she's yeah. taking him down. Because even yeah. watching it, I was like, she's the best babysitter ever. It's yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, I was like, wow, her first thought is stab this guy? Like, I was like, she was just on ready to yeah. fight somebody. She's on the defense. And she yeah. stuffs his hand in the meat grinder so yep. he can't get away. Which was gross and awesome. Because mm-hmm. he's like, where's the kid? You know, mm-hmm. uh, the mm-hmm. kid's not in the bedroom anymore. And so then there's a big throwdown. And eventually she ends up uh, throwing him down a flight of stairs. Yeah. And it's like, but they're never, ever dead at that point. Yep. So his eyes open up, even though there's a yep. giant. And this is another cutback to the babysitter murders. The same thing. Killer wakes up. She's yep. got to kill him. Yep. And I really liked this, the TV smash in the face. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's we, the that was awesome. We see from inside the television as she drops it because she's like, you ruined my movie or whatever. No, ruined my dinner. Ruined, ruined my, my dinner. dinner. Yeah. Right. That's right. And drops the thing on his face and we see his face like uh, explode Smash. on the yeah, glass. That was yeah, it's like a POV inside the TV onto his face. That was really cool. Yeah. So then the parents come home. Mm-hmm. speed home and it turns mm-hmm. out it's the doctor from the other yeah. uh, mm-hmm. two stories and his wife and they come in and they find this guy with a TV on his face they roll it off and, and she's like who is it and there's a beat he's like it's Sam the babysitter dun 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 <gasps> turns out the girl is the escaped psycho mm-hmm. tooth mm-hmm. fairy child mutilator crazy yeah. person and she's cooked the goddamn kid in the oven. Yep. <laughs> yep. So they cut back to Clancy Brown. He's like, hey, I see what you did there. So that she came for a little... trophy. She wanted to get the tooth out uh-huh. of the boy. That's yeah, why she's there. That's all she's there in the mortuary to do. And she's like, and then she stabs him because she's like, you're going to tell my story. But Clancy Brown, it turns out, has surprises. Mm-hmm. And then we go into the final thing of the movie. Or what? what's going on with him? Uh, so it, earlier in the movie, we see uh, they're in the foyer during the tour. He explains like, "Oh, this is the foyer," um, and she's like, "Who are the who are these pictures of?" And he's like, "Oh, those are the previous mort- like um, morticians." Morticians, thank you. Um, and in one of the pictures, she sees that it's Clancy Brown sitting there, and it's clearly from like the like mid 1800s right it's like early photography it's like in phantasm when they find that picture of the tall man on the carriage yeah. it's like yeah. that <laughs> that's really what it is yeah um so at this point she she tried to stab him but it clearly didn't work and they make their way to the library and he starts saying like you know all the, all of these stories are collected and some of them are your stories and from the books come these like little charred demon children things that attack her mm-hmm. yeah all and of her victims her. yeah are coming back and taking mm-hmm. their uh their teeth back and right? putting them back in which was cool yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a cool. lot of cg uh yeah. inflamed or charred yeah. baby uh, it wasn't the biggest budget but it was fun yeah yeah, yeah. well i mean it was decent it was decent yeah, yeah. you know it was yeah. like okay mm-hmm. um and so i guess the next morning <clears throat> clancy brown yeah, he's back to work he's Working. But he's working on a body, and then it's uh, yeah. I don't think we see that it's hers. No, we don't see that it's hers. He sews the body back together, and then he goes out to breathe fresh air. Mm-hmm. What, for our, what I am assuming, and this is, I guess, what the movie is is saying is uh, that the help wanted sign. It the the, mort, the mortician has a position there, the help position, right, mm-hmm. for a certain period of time, and then somebody else takes it, mm-hmm. and so now he's released basically from his <laughs> obligation. Yep. And I'm like, oh, he's going to go out and uh, go into the world and live until he dies or whatever. Nope. Nope. It's he, Highlander. Least, there can only be one. Yeah. He gets, well, because we, we've established <laughs> earlier in the, the, the in the story, whenever she tries to run out the front door, there's a portal. And right. She ends up mm-hmm. back in the house and all that. So he's like, I can actually step outside the portal. Mm-hmm. And then he uh, whittles away and dies. <laughs> like, a, <laughs> <laughs> turns to dust in front of her eyes. Mm-hmm. So he's finally out. Yeah. But what does that mean? And she wakes up, realizes that she's in the mortuary, and she starts screaming. Mm-hmm. As then, you would. Because yeah, he, like, stitched her face he stitched back her face, together. Like, yeah, he and, stitched, yeah. 
stitched all up. Mm-hmm. And then we see the final scene is her closing the book because she had been telling the story to the little paper boy from the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. With and the line. In the line, he's like, I think I'm going to go home. And she's like, but I was just about to make dinner. Dun, dun, <laughs> dun. <laughs> Crazy baby killer is going to strike again. Now mm-hmm. is an undead mortician is now occupying that post like the Sentinel. Mm-hmm. Yes. Until yes. <laughs> for hundreds and hundreds of years. Bam. All right. Well, I guess that's the mortuary collection. collection. Mm-hmm. All right. So, uh, any other trivia you would like to impart before we go get um, our mailbag? I think we hit most of it. It was there was just you know we mentioned that a lot of the scenes had like foreshadowing. Um, one that we didn't talk about in the the, the short of the frat boy. Mm-hmm. Um. His keys, they focus on the keychain is of a is of a, is of a seahorse, which as you famously know, seahorse is the male. Oh, they give, give birth. birth. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I so feel like this might uh, really reward a rewatch. I yeah. think, you know, yeah, knowing yeah, that each, kind of stuff. Cause I was yeah. like the, even the April hair or whatever the, yeah, I'm like, that must have some kind of connotation. Yeah. There's mm-hmm. little, there's little Easter eggs throughout the movie mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I thought that was a really good one. Um, and then this is just a fun fact is all of the books in the library. Those were from, remember the TV show, the librarians. Oh yeah. I oh, do remember that's that. Where they got oh, books nice. From. Oh, wow. <laughs> nice. I thought most of that was probably a computer enhanced. No, those were added. the books from the librarians. Okay. Nice. <laughs> Cause there was a lot of CG going on to extend. I think. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. Um, okay. All right. Well, thanks for sticking with us this long. We're going to tell you whether or not we would recommend that you watch the movie. And who knows how that's going to go down. We never know. It sounded like we were talking favorably about it, but it could be. Uh, who knows? We're going to find out. We're going to throw it to the dogs on around the table. But first, <laughs> we're going to answer some of your mail. And in order to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thanks, Igor. I wonder if he has, like, is he going to have a help wanted sign and come and someone's going to come and then he'll, like, turn to dust and someone will take his position as Igor? Do we know that he's the first Igor? That's what I'm saying. Well, he's yeah. he's like an ever evolving Igor. Like when we put a help help wanted sign up, it's because he needs new body parts. Oh, okay. <laughs> that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Who who procures them for him, Holly? Yeah. We don't talk about okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we should uh, remind the good folks at home who want to participate on this interactive portion of our show how they can get a hold of us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Night Freak Show, or Twitter at Set Freak Show. Or by email. Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. About tonight's movie, The Mortuary Collection, Travis Legler writes in and wants to know, has Clancy Brown made it to the Wall of Fame? Because this, Pet Cemetery 2 and the Nightmare on Elm Street remake should put him there. He says... Uh, Highlander. Yeah. And Highlander. Well, see, that's He's- the thing. MF Mad jumps in and says, yes, Clancy Brown has already been there because mm-hmm. he was in... Highlander, Nightmare on Elm Street, Pet Cemetery 2, Mortuary Collection, mm-hmm. Cowboys and Aliens, mm-hmm. yep. and the Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai yeah. across the eighth dimension. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, Clancy maybe Brown it's is the a- Clancy Brown wall of fame. I know. <laughs> it is to me. <laughs> um, last week, we watched a movie called Action USA. Mm-hmm. And about that, Steve Carney wrote in and says, I've never seen Action USA. I think it's streaming on Tubi, and the Blu-ray from Vinegar Syndrome is out of print if I'm remembering correctly, but this picture of the trio of hitmen you posted makes me want to watch the movie, though. I'm sold. I'm going to watch it tonight. <laughs> you know, I actually thought about that movie like throughout the week, and the more I thought about it, the less I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can get that, yeah. <laughs> because, well, because when you don't think about it, you just remember the explosions and the jumps and the fun things and not all the stuff in between it. Yeah, but yeah. I was like thinking about like, man... That movie sucked. <laughs> Ooh, ouch. Revisionist. Uh, <laughs> you're you're like, do to... you take back your recommend? I mean, I'll stand by it. I, yeah, okay. I, I can't take it back. In the moment. In the moment. Yep. It was the heat of the moment of watching mm-hmm. Action USA. All that the fire from the explosions. Michael Whitaker <laughs> writes in and says, uh, hearing, you guys, hearing you guys talk about using a knife to eat an apple thing. that vil- Oh, no, no, no. Sorry. That's from the Wolfman. Yeah. Novato Judoka said... Uh, this movie seems to have been written by a kid's imagination while playing outside with their friends, but they also hit puberty at the same time. And Mac's dad has also been in a great bad Halloween movie 
called Hack O' Lantern. <gasps> really? He's in that? I've had that on my freak show list for a long time. I've seen that movie. It's terrible. That's but we're heard. talking about uh, Gregory Scott Cummings, yep. who's also in It's Always, it's always Sunny, Sunny in yeah. Yeah. Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, uh, he also says, uh, also, I would like to say I got Samurai Cop vibes from this movie, but I remember that Samurai Cop was two years after this. Oh, wow. Blowing. Yeah. That is mind blowing. Like, it is, yeah, because it is. and I think we said this when we watched Samurai Cop, but that movie looked like it was made 15 years before it came out. Yeah, It looks so. So that really fucks with your sense of yeah. when it came out. And it was made over a long period yeah. of time, if I remember. Um, Joey Blythe says uh, talk, we were talking about stuntmen and all that. He says, I've read that Jackie Chan can't get insurance, so he pays out of pocket for himself and his stunt team. Wow. wow. That's got to be expensive, right? Yeah. Wow. Colin looks skeptical. I know. I look skeptical. (laughs) I I feel skeptical on that one. But okay. Uh, The week before we watched the movie called The Wolfman, Michael Whitaker wrote in and said, hearing you guys talk about using a knife to eat an apple thing that villains do reminded me that I actually had to do that for a long period of time when I was a kid because I got braces and it was very difficult to just bite into an apple. You needed to take the pieces of it. So I guess I'm... The villain. But yeah. see, there's a thing, though. I had braces, too, and I didn't sit there and eat the apple with a knife one well, piece at a yeah, time. I cut time. it and then ate the pieces. <laughs> yeah. You're not difference. slicing yeah. it off right. as you go? No. no. I still do that. I'll cut an apple and eat it with, like, peanut butter. Yeah, In yeah. Westerns, I remember seeing, like, they'd have, like, a, a sausage or something. Yeah. You'd slice yeah. it off with yeah. one. You're yep. doing it with, like, one hand with the knife. Yeah. And, yeah. The, yeah. and actually, yeah. And later, just, yeah. later in the week, I was thinking about there's a scene in Sherlock when uh, Moriarty's sitting there talking to him and he's fucking with an apple and a knife. Yeah. yeah. Like, you can't do it and not have, like, a philosophical monologue at the yeah. same time. Like, you have to. You <laughs> then know? you're a villain. Yeah. 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 If you're doing that. That's mm-hmm. one of my favorite monologues. Too. Uh, That's yeah. one where he's like, Honey, you should see me in a crown. Oh, God. I love it. it. It's so good. Well, Michael also says she only mentioned it briefly in the episode, but I'd love to know what Michaela's opinion was of Werewolf by Night. I didn't watch that because I hated uh, what was that previous movie? Scare Me. I hated Scare Me. No, not uh, Werewolves Within, the Marvel That's Werewolves Within. Werewolf by Night. Oh, I love that. Yeah, no, that was great. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I was like, I didn't want to because, no, Uh, Werewolf by Night was awesome. I only wish that they would do more stuff like that. And it was just kind of a little short, but. Yeah, because I I saw it too. Did you see it? No. It was like a one-off deal where Marvel was kind of paying tribute to Universal Horror by, uh, you know, going black and white. A lot of it doesn't actually have to do with the werewolf, Mm -mm. but you do get. It has cool atmosphere. It looks good. It, 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 they they tried and I want to encourage more. So I'm like, yes. Yeah, because it's yeah, fun yeah. and it doesn't overextend its walk. Yeah, like exactly. Most yeah. other Marvel. Yeah, no. We're, I'm yeah. sorry. I was thinking <laughs> Werewolves Within. And no, I have not watched that. Yeah. I saw that too and yeah. thought it was funny. Uh, it Travis funny. Legler <laughs> writes in and says, I read Rick Baker always wanted uh, to do the Wolfman because the one thing he didn't like about American Werewolf in London was the werewolf was more like a wolf instead of a man covered in wolf hair. So this was his dream to finally do a bipedal wolf creature and show what he could do and he didn't get the chance. No, but we're that... saying he actually did get the, the makeup design in this, in yeah. the Wolfman, is Rick Baker's update of a bipedal. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. It's the Lon right. Chaney Jr. Mm-hmm. makeup updated. So he did get to do that. That really makes me love Rick Baker, though, because in my mind, I've always thought of, I think I've talked about this on previous werewolf movie episodes, but like there is a difference between a wolf man and a werewolf. Like, you know, like yeah. I yeah. picture a werewolf as like being, yeah, like a bipedal wolf, whereas like a wolf man is like just a really hairy wolfish dude. Right. You yeah, know? yeah. Yeah. And I don't so I get remember. what he's saying. <laughs> Well, was it that episode? On uh, one recent episode, for some reason, we were talking about glory holes. <laughs> uh, it, oh, what was that? Uh, I don't remember what inspired it. Uh, it wasn't the movie itself. So there was something that there wasn't it might there have a been hole from involved a, from with a something. whisper to a scream. Yeah, it might have been. Might have been. But the boy with the Jason tattoo <laughs> writes in and says, speaking on glory hole movies, because we pointed out there's one called Glory, I believe. Um <laughs> Right? Is that? No. What is it called? But we mentioned it on that episode. He says there's also a movie called The Special. And it was on Tubi and it's on Peacock. All right. It's about a dick box. Well, okay. Now they I say, uh, the, I just read the uh, description. It was something, yeah. something meets the blob. Well, I'm sold. <laughs> the Special. Hmm. So there the you special. Go. Okay. Yep. 
Oh, well, I, yeah, glorious. now I can add this to my list. Glorious is the glory hole movie. There you go. And it's on Shudder, ironically, <laughs> for the service which we watched tonight's this movie. special from 2020? Yeah. Oh, is this a found have... footage movie too? Oh my god! Okay. Oh, no. all right. <laughs> putting wow. it on all right. List. Well, all right. Wow. <laughs> all right. Well, now we're gonna go around the room and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie, The Mortuary Collection. Starting with Kayla, what did you think of the Mortuary Collection? It has an exploding dick. Enough said. <laughs> Recommend. <laughs> You gotta watch it. You don't you literally don't need to know anything else. Yeah. You probably shouldn't even know that. It's probably best to go in not even knowing that. But if you're listening to this point, you've heard it all. Yeah. I don't need to say anything other than there's an exploding dick in this movie. That's Colin, it. what'd you think? Yeah. Well, I guess I saw the movie before. Um and I was not impressed with it. And so tonight's viewing was like, okay, I actually want it. Because it was I remember Actually, I didn't remember anything about it. There were certain images and visuals. So, you know, again, it could be uh, under the conditions that I watched. It might have been, you know, something. So tonight was like basically almost watching the thing again. I didn't remember how the end uh, sequence with the babysitter turned out, but I was like ahead of the movie and I was like, Mm -hmm. I know what's going on here. Mm -hmm. The guy's actually the babysitter and Mm -hmm. she's the killer. Um it's a movie that uh, I guess from a technical perspective, uh, I appreciate it that they were, the filmmakers were able to pull off like a very professional, very slick, very well produced uh, s- small movie. Um, the stories themselves, I guess I am going to, you know, we just watched it. So now they're in my, my mind more they, they but they didn't stick with me it's not like an anthology where you're like this story is great and this story is whatever they all just kind of faded um i'm on a uh you know like i said recent we just watched it and it's like okay you know i think i appreciated it a lot better tonight um i still didn't like you know yeah all that perfunctory kind of stuff at the end really didn't really do a whole lot for me it could have ended a few minutes earlier i think yeah. i agree with you yeah because i mean once the cgi baby things were coming up it was like yeah okay whatever you know i mean just because the it, reveal has happened so we're yeah. kind of like okay that's the story over. i think that's maybe yeah. part of it and that kind of cg just does turn me off so i guess that's a thing i live in a in a headspace where that that kind of overly digital stuff does somehow, you know, in some cases, uh, turn me off. Even though I, I remember mm-hmm. Sean's argument on the Wolfman episode was like, every shot looks like it's been augmented. Yeah. And I like that. Yeah. Here, every shot, you know, exterior I mean, there's a big shot budget difference, you looks know, between like it was movies. augmented. Yeah, but I mean, the effect, I guess, is the same, right? Mm-hmm. You're like, well, if we're looking out at the town, it's, you know, it's been it's been digitally altered. Most people watch, they don't care about any of that mm-hmm. stuff. Very true. So um, tonight, based on tonight's viewing, I think I would recommend the movie uh, because it was fun. Uh, some of it was clever. Um, the There's a lot of uh, showcase like monster designs and visual effects. Uh, the music, I mean, it's mm-hmm. a it, the totality of the package. I guess mm-hmm. I sit there going like, okay, it's impressive, you know. Right. Um, so... I guess I'm going to recommend it. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like, it's like two and a half stars, right? It's meeting, it's a little better than average. Well, I would say two stars is average. Okay. I'm going out of, okay. out of four. Out of four? Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, we'd go with three. Okay. All right. Yeah, okay. All right. okay. Uh, out of five. Solid. So, all right. So, there you go. Uh, Holly, what'd you think? Yeah. So, like I said earlier, I I came across this movie because of Clancy Brown's Instagram. Mm-hmm. I recommend that all of you follow Clancy Brown on Instagram. He's great. Um... And yeah, I th- I thought it was a lot of fun. It it gave me all of the pieces that I like from a horror anthology. Um, I thought it was very creative. I, th- I thought the storytelling was was pretty good. Um, I, like we said, it's 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 a well shot movie. It's it's a pretty movie. Um, each each one has an atmosphere and ambiance and. Um, yeah, it was just it was a good time. It it definitely surprised me in a lot of ways. I did not. I did not anticipate seeing a exploding dick give birth to a baby. That was, mm-hmm. I mean, really, that's, it's enough. <laughs> yeah, it's that's enough. all you need to know. It's, it's enough. <laughs> Sean's um, going to be upset that this I is know. what he missed. Literally, while we were watching it, I, I, <laughs> I texted my friend Tim and I was like, um, 
of like one of the shorts was about a frat guy that was impregnated by a succubus girl and gave birth to a monster baby that exploded from his dick. <laughs> and he responded, that's fucking hilarious. And it made my day. <laughs> and I was like, that, that sums it up. You know, that sums it up. So, yeah, I'm going to recommend it. I, I think there's a lot of creativity in it. It's and I liked the rapper. I love Clancy Brown in this. Mm-hmm. He's so great. I already love him anyway. Um, but he's just perfect in this role. And I really liked the wraparound. I liked that we end with her story. Uh, I thought it was really interesting. I kind of had suspicions, but I didn't really call it um, completely. I agree that it could have ended a few minutes earlier. They could have shaved that off um, and had like a shorter version of Clancy Brown passing the torch. That would have been more effective. But overall, I thought it was great, and I I definitely recommend it. I I hope that this guy gets more work. Um, I'm not sure what he's up to, but hopefully Mm -hmm. they're putting him to use because I think he's pretty solid. All right, well, I guess yeah. that means that uh, uh, Freak Show recommended you yeah. have to watch the Mortuary, Mortuary Collection Yep. now streaming on Shudder. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, next week we're going to watch a movie that's chosen by... And Kayla, what are we watching next week? Well, Thanksgiving is a time for family, you guys. It sure So is. we're going to check a long overdue movie off the list. We're going to watch Orphan from 2009. There we go. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Which recently had a <laughs> sequel, sequel like yeah. 10 years later. Yeah. Prequel, uh, I guess. Prequel, yeah, right. Prequel. Yeah. yeah. All right. Orphan next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>